Hey, 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 greetings and salutations. Welcome back, David Duford here. I am with Cindy Seal of insurancemarketinghub.com where they provide some of the industry's best sources for direct mail in the final expense Medicare space and beyond. We're gonna talk a good bit today about why it might be a better idea for a lot of you to actually just buy leads instead of self-generate. We're gonna kind of go into a more protracted conversation about when it's a good idea to do that, when it's not. And, and, and really why I think a lot of agents, including probably like 80% plus of you out there, uh, should wait on do-it-yourself stuff and instead buy leads instead. So, uh, Cindy, welcome. Greetings and salutations from Bahama. <laughs> thank you. Thank you, David. It's nice to be with you again. Yeah, thanks for taking some time here. So why don't you give uh, my audience an introduction about yourself, your company, if they've never heard of you before and what you guys do. Okay. As David said, um, I'm Cindy Seal. I'm owner and president of uh, Insurance Marketing Hub. We've been around for years, but I started this company about six years ago. Um, and we focus on direct mail leads right now. Uh, we're going to be getting into the digital space. And um, we basically use a data-driven approach to generating direct mail leads for our clients. We service both you know, insurance marketing organizations as well as the independent agent. Yeah, and 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 take a moment to describe what sets you guys apart from the other direct mail vendors. You mentioned data. I'd like mm -hmm. you to expand on that because I don't think agents, especially the newer ones, understand or really appreciate how that can make such an impact on the quality and the price point of your leads. Yes, absolutely. Um, you know, targeting and data is probably the number one piece of doing a really good direct mail marketing campaign. Um, years ago, I worked in the cost per lead um, basis, and it was all about targeting the, the data to get the best possible lead at the best possible price. And what that means is not just knowing who to target, but who not to target. So you get rid of, of a lot of data. There are companies out there that do what I call spray and pray, and that's they mail, mail everything, they hope for the best. What we do is we score and we model our data to be able to target the best data. And then about 30% of our data, we never mail because we know it won't respond. So that's what really makes the difference in a good quality lead. That and, you know, targeting the right message to, to the audience as well. Right. And I think that's what makes uh, Cindy's company stand apart from the other direct mail because no one really in our space talks about the data modeling or how to preferentially target the better responders uh, that are more intentful and interested in what we're doing. And the outcome to all of this, guys, is that, especially nowadays, if you're in Medicare or final expense, is you got to really control your acquisition cost, right? And that's predicated by what you're paying for marketing. And so you need some intelligence, you need some modeling behind how you're doing your marketing to make sure that you're getting the best bang for your buck. Uh, that's just, this market is more competitive and it's not that you can't make money in it at all. It's great. It's great. It's a great, still a great not opportunity. But what's increased is the acquisition costs. And it may, it makes Cindy services and, and that much more demand uh, to get a lead that is uh, uh, more competitively priced and mar marketed to the right people that's going to get you in front of the best prospects. So um, one thing I wanted to talk about, because this video is first going to appear on my do-it-yourself uh, uh, training that we're doing. Uh, it's probably the first uh, showing of this video that's gonna gonna be seen. And so a lot of what people have seen up to this point are videos about vendors that provide services for leads and how agents can basically learn how to do it themselves and control the entire process. Now, I'll tell you my opinion in a little bit. I think it's not right for most agents. It may surprise you, you're on a do-it-yourself mm -hmm. video. I'm sporting it. Why would I say that? I'll explain in a minute. But I wanna give you, I wanna see what your perspective is as a lead provider, you've been in the business a long time. What are some reasons agents should consider not outsourcing the lead generation prospect and or process, but instead maybe outsourcing it to you guys as opposed to insourcing it and self-generating? So I think there's a couple of reasons. Um, I, first of all, let me say I'm a proponent of pretty much any kind of lead type. They all serve a purpose. But the reason that I think it's great to be able to outsource it to somebody is you're lead vendor will have much more experience. They're not doing trial and error. They can save you time, money. They know how to target if they're doing any kind of data modeling or anything like that. Um, and the other piece of it is I always believe in putting your, um, your time and your effort into things that you do best and will generate the best revenue for you. 
So if selling insurance is where you make your money, then spend your time and effort there because the ROI will be much higher. Um, and I use an example, a friend of mine um, owned a hemp business and they, they created products like soaps and different things like that. And they decided, hey, we'll grow our own hemp. That'll be great. Because mm. before they were outsourcing it, they learned a lot. They, they learned how to ask the right questions of hemp growers and stuff like that, but they lost their shirts on the, the hemp side and they lost touch with their business and being able to grow their business. So I use that as an example to say, if you're really good at insurance and that's where you make your bread and butter, focus your efforts there. And, and I do leads. People like me do leads. I don't sell insurance. So if everybody kind of does what they do best, I think you end up in the long run with a better ROI. Yeah, I think that's a a, a very profound uh, long-term and short-term consideration for you guys who are new to the business or experienced. You know, um, we always have partners in business, right? And we're always asked, and, and no matter if you're selling insurance or, other, or otherwise, you're going to be prompted with, hey, maybe I should take responsibility for this particular task. And sometimes it's a good idea, but a lot of the times it ends up being a terrible idea because you forget what really matters. And I, I would say as a person who recruits agents, trains them in my agency, the number one thing that makes my agents money is being in front of prospects in yes. appointments or over the phone. And my goal as a trainer, as should be every trainer and managers and agency owners goal is to get more agents in front of more prospects. Because if you're in front of more prospects and that's what your time is spent on, you're going to make more money. And what a lot of people that I have seen go through that go through the self-generation aspect, and it's not necessarily everybody's going to go through this, but a, a good percentage of people, they they buy the course, they never do anything with it because it's so complicated. It's more, more moving parts than they thought, and it takes a lot more time, effort, money, and energy than they originally imagined. Um, again, we know people who do it well on a self-generated basis, but the, the reality is if you have a good lead vendor... And they're providing you solutions like what Cindy does, then you can focus on what matters, which is revenue uh, creation activities as as uh, meaning being in front of your clients and asking for more business. Any thoughts on that, Cindy? I 100% I agree with it. I mean, like I said, I'm a proponent of really knowing leads. So if you're experimenting with your own lead generation, I think it's a great idea. Just make sure that you don't sink too much time in that. You don't let it your business suffer, but doing it yourself and learning some things makes you a better partner for a lead vendor too, because you know what it takes, you know what you're looking for, you've had some trial and error, and you can ask the right questions when you're working with a lead vendor. So it's not a bad thing at all to do. And it's also a good way to supplement any shortages you could have when you're working with your lead vendor. So the combo of the two is good. Um, and I totally agree with you, David, on the, the newbies out there. This is not a this is not a talk to I mean not a track for a new agent. The new agent has so much um, effort to spend on learning the business and learning how to sell and learning how to handle objections. It's not the right time for them to be experimenting with it. But more experienced agents, I think it is a good fit. And I think they most experienced agents that I know use a mix of leads anyway. So self-generated is just a natural progression in my opinion. Yeah, to, to me, the biggest thing, uh, and I 100% agree with you for the new people, like the last thing you should do, in my opinion, unless you have some kind of background in, in social media management, you understand the process intuitively at this point, you should just shelf the idea of doing any do-it-yourself, self-gen, Facebook, TikTok, YouTube, whatever, until you've established the more important skill set, which is what? Selling. If you can sell consistently and you can go out every week and make money, then I think at that point, there's a level of, of security yeah. you've developed for yourself to start experimenting because that's what this is. Ultimately, it's an experimentation. I don't want new agents experimenting. I guess that's my point. New agents already have the world against them. They got to learn a whole new skill set. They got to deal with a whole new business model. There's a lot at risk here. And being also responsible for coming up with the leads on a self-generated basis it adds another skill set that complicates what otherwise should be simple. So for me, my take on this is, is guys, if you're new, don't even buy a course, man. Just, just focus three to six months, learn your script, get good at this business, get consistent, uh, be able to wake up every week and not worry you're going to make money or not. You know, and that 
take some time because it's a skill set to develop and then start looking at these courses. And then in the meantime, or forever, as a lot of our top producers do, I mean, a lot of, a lot of our guys, um, like John Dean, you know, um, he's doing leads that a completely direct mail and he wrote a hundred policies this last month and he's not doing self gen. He doesn't have the time. What his, what he's doing works, you know? So, um, long story short, is remember, this is a simple business, but it can be very complicated if you allow it to be. Um, Cindy, uh, tell my audience a little bit about what you guys do specifically. What kind of agents do you serve? What kind of product lines are you in? And and just give us kind of an, an, an overview on that, please. Okay, great. Um, well, like I said, we do insurance marketing organizations, agencies, and independent agents. Independent agents are new to us. Before we were only IMO, um, but as we, you know, it was kind of a fluke that we started working with agents, but we have started working with them. We do um, direct mail for mortgage protection, final expense, Medicare. We dab it a little bit in some annuity work, but for the most part, those are three big product lines that we do. Um, and with the, what we do differently than I think most mailing companies We'll work with an agency or an agent and figure out where they want to mail. We'll look at historic response rates. We'll look at availability and we'll, we'll develop a strategic plan for how they should be generating leads, especially if they're looking to do something on a weekly basis. Um, we also have a lead management system that um, comes with the program so that they have access to their leads, can print them, can use the CRM. So that's just part of the perks of working with us. What's uh, and, and for those some some people watching this are definitely going to have their own agency. How can you explain a little bit about how your IMO or agency program works? Our agency program or our IMO program, we tip, typically the the leads are either ordered directly through a point person at the IMO, so they're they're collecting orders and placing big weekly orders, and then um, we we can target for the agent they give us, so they can give us like Cindy wants ten leads and David wants twenty leads, and that's how we mail. And everything is coordinated through a central um, point person. Um, when we're working with an agent, um, it's it's just it's a smaller scale version of that. Um, since we're doing things specifically for them, um, whenever we're mailing for agency or IMO, we use a ninety day suppression period so we can keep our data fresh, which means we're not remailing the same people over and over. We give it a, a ninety day rest before we go in there, and that keeps it fresh. We'll work with either the IMO or the agency, I mean, or the agent on what type of card they're looking to mail and also um, what kind of demographics they're looking to mail. We really customize it. For the agency, it's customized holistically to the agency, all the agents. For the agent, it's specific to them, what they're looking to mail. Um, and it's pretty much turnkey. Um, you know, sometimes they place recurring orders, so it's just generating, you know, orders every week. Sometimes they're changing things up, and we take an order once a week and mail. Um, everything is mailed standard pre-sort, comes back first class, um, scanned and uploaded to the lead management system. So it's fairly turnkey, don't have to do it a lot of thinking after the big strategy is, is built for the plan. Uh, a lot of agents will ask, are your leads ever resold to others? Never. Um, we get asked a lot for B leads, which we never have. When we generate a lead, it's exclusive to the person we're generating it for. We deliver it and that's it. You know, after a 90 day period, when we're remailing, we're buying new data, it's, we never touch those leads again. So they're yours. And even if they're in our CRM, we get asked this a lot. Well, if they're in their CRM, we'll never have access to it. Well, if you mail once for us, we will deliver leads as long as you want them delivered to you. I mean, we'll get leads back sometimes a year, um, two years after we've mailed it, and we'll still deliver that to you, and you'll still have access. To it. What are some tips you would give agents? Because again, a lot of the people watching this are on the newer side. What are some some tips you would give agents who are buying direct mail leads from you guys, like to get the best experience and the highest odd chance of closing business? Um, the very first thing when I'm working with an agent is I find out how experienced they are with this. Um, if if they've never really if they're brand new to the business, a lot of times I'll let them know you should make sure you have your talk track down, your objections, get that down. Direct mail can be expensive, but it's really, really good quality. But when you're new, 
if you haven't gotten your, your um, talk track and you're just feeling comfortable out there, you're not going to do well with direct mail leads. And it's an expensive proposition. I always recommend like aged digital or really inexpensive digital so that you can fail and fail quickly so that when you're good at what you do, then you can start moving into direct mail. Um, if you've got your talk track down, then the, the thing that I recommend is be willing to move. Don't sit in one place because you will burn out a territory really, really fast. And I think that's the biggest mistake some agents make. I only want to work these zip codes. Well, that may work the first couple of times you mail, but then you just tear up the territory and then you're not going to get response rates that you want. The other thing I think I would recommend is don't overly narrow your demographics. I mean, great to target what you're looking for, but some people think if I narrow in on my um, age or my income that I'm in the I'm going to get what I want. And typically what that does is just narrow your data down to the point of it's not sustainable. Um, we always tell people when we look at your portfolio of what you're trying to mail, that you need a minimum of 13 weeks to be able to keep data fresh. And that's basically one suppression cycle. Um, so if you don't have 13 weeks, we'll have you add more territory or we'll look at widening your demographics so that you can keep your data fresh and your response rates good. Uh, what about so we kind of a lot of this is more is really it's it's your entire program for a lot of people here maybe thinking this is about final expense, but you also do Medicare leads. A lot has yes. changed with the Medicare world. Can yes. you kind of describe what you guys are doing now as far as direct mail? Is it still viable for the agent? Yeah, absolutely it is. Um when CMS first came out with the new compliance language during AEP it really hurt response rates, like 50 to 60% drop in response rates with the new compliance language. And, um, and it happened right at AEP, which you have a little bit of a drop during AEP because so much mail is going into the marketplace. Um, but what we learned through this is, you know, how we place the compliance language, what we need to say. So we've kind of gotten our, it's, everything that we do with direct mail is testing. So we've sort of had a lot more testing behind us and we've been able to have uh, response rates rebound on Medicare. So I still think it's a really viable option, um, which in the beginning, when we first started um, the uh, compliance language, I was like, oh, this is gonna really kill <laughs> direct mail. Um, but but honestly, it hasn't now. I think we've rebounded, we've learned how to do it and compliance language is here to stay. So we just need to work with it whether you're digital or direct mail. Yeah, and if you're if you're out there and you're in the Medicare space and you've just been decimated by the response rate changes in your your mail house or IMO is not helping you, Cindy's got it figured out, please give them a call because uh, I've looked at the numbers. They've rebounded response rates and they're doing it compliantly. Um, reach out. They're, they're doing a fantastic job. So, um, Cindy, where can agents or IMOs who are interested in doing business with you go to learn more about... Um, you know, setting up mailing campaigns with you? So they can either go to insurancemarketinghub.com, which is our website. And there is a contact sheet um, on, on our on any of our pro product pages where they can actually um, schedule an appointment with us. And there's three of us. There's um, Eric, Chase, and myself who will do a consult with you and can help you plan out. And, and even if it's just to answer your questions, we're happy to do that. We do a lot of um, consulting with folks who are just getting into the business and want to know more about leads, we probably take, I'd say maybe 10, 15 calls, you know, a week on just new guys looking for how do I do this? So we're happy to help. Um, and and in, in many ways, we know that it'll be a long-term client, even if it doesn't start off right away. So we're happy to help you with that. Perfect. So insurancemarketinghub.com is where you need to go. Cindy, thanks for taking some time on your vacation. To sure. be with us. We appreciate you. Yeah, absolutely. It was great to be with you again, David.